All right. Well, welcome. My name is Cassie Rosas Carson. I am the Internship and Professional Development Coordinator for the College of IST Career Solutions Office. I am joined by my colleague, Rita Griffith. She's going to help with throwing some resources that I'm talking about throughout the presentation into the chat and helping with addressing your questions. So please write any questions that you have through the Q&A and the chat. We'd be happy to address those through the presentation and at the end of the presentation as well. So let's get started with interviewing. Hopefully all of you guys are starting to put on some or put in some online applications, hopefully had some good conversations at the career fair last week, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks, you're going to be getting those um, emails and phone calls to be doing those interviews and getting further in that application process. So as you're preparing for the um, interview, you have a couple pre preparation steps that you want to go through. And we're going to go into detail in each of these as you are doing your research, your qualification evidence, and practicing as your preparation stage of the interview process. So first, starting with the research, you want to be able to get information about the company so that you're able to address some basic questions about the company that might show your interest, your knowledge of the company, why you're interested in doing an internship or, or doing a full-time position with this company. And in order to answer that question very genuinely, as we are all attracted to different things about companies, we all have different values of what we're looking for in a potential employer, you might want to gather some of this information for all of these places or just a couple of them. It's completely up to you. Their website is a really great place to start as you can gather a lot of information about a company based on their website. A LinkedIn page is another great place that you can gather information because you can see different things that they're posting about their company. It could be different things they're highlighting. Um, programs that they have, accomplishments, things that can really give you a little bit more of an insight maybe into the culture or the value of the organization. And it also gives you the people tab where you can see who's working for this company where you can potentially identify um, recruiters, alumni from even the College of IST or Penn State in general, where you can maybe reach out and get some personalized information from someone who actually works with that company. And that can give you some really strong answers to some of those general questions about the company and to help you better customize some of your answers. Um, also to thinking about some potential interview questions you might be getting. There's some information that's out there about what some companies might ask on a regular basis. You might get some self-reported feedback from Glassdoor or from previous people that have interviewed with that company to give you some insights of companies or questions you might um, anticipate. Some companies have some really great information on their actual like career page of how to prepare for an interview with their organization. Some of them have videos, some of them have tips. Sometimes they email you this information and some I've even seen some YouTube videos. So that's something that you can always check and see what kind of information the company might put be putting out itself. You can also do a Google search and see what other information is out there, whether it's maybe a blog post somewhere or another career related website that might have some information. And it's also another great uh, question to ask potential alumni of what their interview process was like with the company. The next part is looking at your qualifications and how can you show this evidence within your questions, your answers in an interview. So one of the best ways is always make sure that you are keeping the job description that you apply to. So whether you're printing it out, whether you're copying and pasting it into a Word document, but something that you can refer back to because a lot of companies do take their posts down once they've started the interview process. And you wanna make sure that you have this to refer back to because they're pretty much giving you the rubric 
um, of sorts of how they're looking at your resume and how they're going to be creating interview questions. So it's a really great wealth of knowledge of what they're looking for. One of the things I like to do, I'm kind of old school, I love to print it out and I actually take a highlighter and I highlight all of my qualifications of a job description. And then I start to make little notes of different things that I've done in my past career, my current position that has shown evidence of this skill or shown that I've actually done this task in the past. It's also a great way for you to anticipate some questions that you might be getting as well. It's also good to just refresh yourself of what is on your resume that you use to apply to that exact position because they ha might have it in front of you, even maybe your cover letter and asking you questions specifically about those documents. So you wanna have that fresh in your mind as well. And just making sure that you remember all the classes that you've taken, all the different maybe in-class projects you've done, personal projects that you've done, um, part-time jobs, internships, things like that. So really making sure that you're reflecting back on the last couple of years. So a lot of students always ask me like, okay, so the job description, how am I going to anticipate potential questions just like this? So something that you might see is working in a team, being able to do things effectively within a team. So maybe they're going to ask you some type of question, behavioral based, like, Tell me about a time you worked in a team to reach a successful outcome. So maybe you want to think back of maybe a student organization, part-time job, in-class project, where you had to work in a team that you got a good grade or you were able to complete a task or a goal. So seeing the different bullet points, the different qualifications, and then pairing that back to some of your experiences, because a lot of these type of questions are going to be behavioral based questions. And we'll get into more about what that is um, in a minute. But you want to be able to think back and have some experiences ready in your head so that you can quickly answer some of those questions and be able to give examples from real past experiences. So it could be an example of how you've used a skill or how you've learned a skill, how you've used it in the past, um, things like that, because showing your past behavior is a good indicator of your first, of future behavior. And the other strong thing in your preparation is going to be practice, 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 because it's going to be nerve wracking. Interviewing is nerve wracking if we completely get that. Um, and the employers know that. And so the more that you can practice and the more that you prepare for these, that when those nerves are going, you kind of are going to have that muscle memory kind of going in because you've already kind of done this before. It's easier for you to kind of work through that um, and have better answers when you have more of that adrenaline and nerves. So there's some great resources that are available to you, like scheduling a mock interview through the Bank of America Career Services, through the university-wide career services, and working with some of their peers. We have platforms that you can utilize that you have access to for free. Um, that is through our website and Reed, I'm sure we'll throw in the links um, through interview stream. We also have LinkedIn has really added a very nice um, artificial intelligence based um, interview feature on the jobs tab, which is free and accessible to everyone. That's really great to utilize. Even practicing with a friend creating some potential questions with the job description, give it to your friend, and then just sit in your living room and practice just saying them out loud to each other to a real person can even be a great way to practice. You can always schedule an appointment through Starfish with a job coach like myself or Rita or the other coaches in our office, and we're happy to do some role playing with you or answer some questions that you might have about the interview process so that you can feel more prepared. And even just Starting with standing in front of a mirror can be a great way to practice as well, and then work up to maybe these other things with um, people. So I'd like to just cover a couple of interview formats. Every company 
has their own way of recruiting and working their interview process. So there isn't one like one universal process that happens in the United States or through, you know, all companies. So some things that you might anticipate are AI screenings. These have really boomed over the COVID era and is not going anywhere in the hiring process. So this is when you might get a email um, with some instructions. That is a pre-recorded situation. We'll go into more detail in a moment. A phone interview or phone screening, you might anticipate a phone screening that's going to be about a 10 to 15 minute um, conversation with a recruiter or HR representative, um, and they might ask you about four questions and then decide if you move forward with an actual first round. Some first rounds can be phone interviews. I know both of my um, first round interviews with Penn State was a 45 minute phone conversation that is not unusual to have a a phone interview that's anywhere for 30 minutes to an hour with maybe one to like four people. Um, they might be on a speaker situation. Um, virtual interviewing, especially if you're not able to travel somewhere, we're still gonna be seeing a lot of live virtual interviewing through different platforms like BlueJeans, Zoom, um, Skype, WebEx, um, et cetera. And that can also be with anywhere for one person to a group of individuals if there is a hiring committee. In-person interviews are coming back, which we're very excited about that as we're getting farther and farther into a post-COVID world. Um, so you might be traveling somewhere for this in-person interview. It might be something that happens on campus or locally, depending upon as well. And there's also sometimes what we hear from companies, super days, where they might plan for a half day type of interview situation where you have a couple of short um, in-person interviews, you might have a case study, um, and you might have some like meet and greet and tours along the way as well. And that can be a half day or a full day, depending on the company. And we're starting to see those returning as well. Rhea, go ahead. Real quickly, I just wanted to say that you mentioned case interviewing, and I'm sure you're going to touch on it later, but I did put a link in the chat to one of a really good solid resource for case interviewing, which is really common for cons the consulting industry. Um, additionally, I put in the chat the uh, mock interview link for the Penn State Career Services. Awesome, thank you. So I wanted to touch base a little bit more about virtual screening interviews because this is becoming a really large part of the hiring process as applicant tracking systems have kind of really taken over recruiting over the last, I would say three years or so. And we're seeing about 97% of companies utilizing this type of software. And part of the software is not just the screening of the resume, but also potentially the first screening um, interview as well. And so a lot of companies are utilizing this because it takes out some of that human bias that can definitely potentially um, skew candidates that are being selected. It saves the company money as they are able to scan a larger amount of candidates um, and narrow down the number of people that they're going to um, talk with live in person and it saves their money. It's also become a billion dollar industry as we've seen a lot of companies um, create this type of AI um, that's getting distributed and utilized through all different types of industries. So if you are getting this interview, something that you'll anticipate is you'll get an email with directions. Please make sure that you are reading these very carefully and you're reading them thoroughly and all the way through before you click on anything, because sometimes the links are a one-time only link and you do not get a second try to click on that. So making sure that you're reading through the directions so you're not messing anything up because it is going through a system and is not coming from an actual person. Sometimes they give you only one try to answer a question. Sometimes they give you two. Again, this is why reading the directions are really important. And so what it is, is that once you click on the link, it's going to take you to the interview platform and it's going to have a recorded person ask you a question and then your camera and audio is gonna go on and then you're gonna answer the question almost like a live interview. And when they're evaluating their interview and 
um, the AI is evaluating you and then sending a score and report to a then recruiter. They're looking at some different things like your rate of speech, filler words, tone of voice. They're looking at your eye contact that's through the camera, but also looking directly at the screen, body movement, um, your professional dress, your background, things that show confidence, things that show, you know, that you're engaged, excited about positions, and you're also being truthful about the things that you are speaking about. Um, and so you also want to make sure that you are stating and utilizing skills and keywords for the job description. So again, that job description is so important to have so that you can refer back to um, throughout the entire recruiting process. Some tips for some um, AI is that you want to make sure that you're, you have really good lighting on your face, because if there's any shadows or things like that, then it's not reading um, your facial expressions, your eye contact, um, as clearly as if you had a very nice lit face. You also need to make sure that you have a very clean background as most of those, I would say all of the features, at least as of my knowledge now, do not have a way to blur the background um, like mine is now. So if you have a lot of busy things in the background, um, it can also skew the ability to read your face as it's picking up things from the background. So the more clear and clean background you have or plain, the better. Um, you want to make sure that your camera is at eye level so that you're maintaining and they're always scoring you correctly with your eye contact. You want to make sure that you're speaking clearly so that it's picking up your keywords, the correct rate of speech, your filler words, because um, the more you talk faster, it's not going to read things um, and, and accurately um, evaluate your responses. And again, making sure that you're utilizing those keywords that they used within the job description. So now we're going into some type of questions as you have a little bit of an idea of potential formats and things like that. And then these are the type of questions that you can anticipate through any of these um, interview formats. Um, and from past experience and things that I've heard from students, you can anticipate anything from one interview to up to potentially six interviews. And again, that all is dependent on the company and their hiring process. So throughout the hiring process, regardless of how many interviews you have, um, you're going to get a mix of these type of questions. So the general questions, those are going to be some good openers for starters, first round interviews, those tell me about yourself, where you want to give to a one to two minute introduction um, that includes, you know, your professional background. Um, but also you can throw in some personal things if you would like, depending on what you want to share with the company. You want to know why that you're excited about this company, why you want to work there, um, what you feel like you can contribute to the organization, things like that, because they want to know that someone's going to stay or want to maybe have a potential or opportunity for a full-time job. So if you're going for an internship, they want to know that you're open to a full-time offer as well. So they want to make sure you're not only just interested in like, I need a job to get a job but I want a place that I can grow and stay with because it is expensive for companies to con constantly recruit. So they always wanna look for longevity. You might get some things like, tell me your strengths and weaknesses. Where do you see yourself in five years? Those type of questions are all gonna be in that kind of general question area. And the best thing that you want to do is make sure that you're being honest you want to be professional and well articulated and prepared for these questions, but you also want to be very honest with all of your answers as they will know if you're lying or over exaggerating, um, whether it's through the interview process or later after being hired. So always make sure that you're being honest. Answer to your best ability and don't be afraid to take a breath. You do not have to start talking the moment that they stop talking. Um, so take a breath if you need a second just to kind of gather your thoughts really quick and then go into the answer that's completely fine. That way that helps you to prevent filler words, that helps you to prevent stuttering, and it helps you to prevent kind of talking in circles because you kind of started talking before you had an idea of where you wanted to go. The next thing that you're going to see a ton of questions about is behavioral based questions. And these are going to be questions that are like, tell me about a time when, give me an example of, tell me about a situation. They're always referring back to something that has happened in the past. Again, that past behavior helps to predict 
future behavior. Um, so ways to answer these questions is by using the STAR method, that is situation, task, action, result, and reflection. So maybe they're asking you about a time where you had to learn a new skill. You're going to talk about the situation where you learned a new skill. Was that something that you did on your own independently? Was it maybe an assignment in class? You kind of want to set up that who, what, when, where, why when you're doing your storytelling. The task is what they're asking you about in this question. It's about learning a new skill. Another question, it could be to tell you about a time that you failed or something else. So that would be your task. The action is what you did in that situation related to the task. The results of what happened in the situation, did you get stronger in this new skill? Um, how did you handle failing at something? Um, and then the reflection is really for some of those negative, more um, related questions that made a mistake, had a time and failed, um, had maybe had conflict with someone. You're reiterating or highlighting what you've learned from that situation and what things you will do differently in the future. And as you guys are coming from a STEM college, you will probably anticipate some technical questions throughout the interview. And these are going to be similar to some either general questions or behavioral based, depending on how they word it, where they might ask you about an example of how you used a certain skill. Um, or maybe they've asked you to give an example of utilizing it in a project or problem solving. Um, so, or they might even give you a specific situation and they want you to talk them through how you might handle that, maybe a technical problem. How would you go about troubleshooting this issue or helping a client um, work through this issue? So those are some different kinds of ways that they might get at your technical knowledge and skill set and assess that through the process as it relates to the position. Some companies might even give you an actual assessment that is through a computer, maybe a coding assessment or thing like that. And that is going to be sent to you very similarly, just as the AI screening interview as well. So making sure that you're just giving as many um, it, details as you can to really show your technical knowledge and past experience, whether it's from the class, a student organization, or personal things that you've done on your own. And if they're asking about certain situations and how you would approach, making sure that you really are talking through in detail your, thing, your thought process of how you would handle that step by step. The more specific, the better. So at the end, of each interview, except for the AI ones, you'll probably have an opportunity to answer some, or ask some follow-up questions. This is your turn to assess them because an interview is not just they have all the power and it's all about them assessing you. You don't necessarily have to accept every offer that you get. You get to evaluate the company just like they get to evaluate you and figure out what is the best step because you might be in a position where you have more than one offer and you need to be able to make that decision of who's the best fit for you. So we want to make sure that you have some good questions um, that will help you to make those decisions to make sure you're finding the best fit for you. So think about things that are important to you, whether it's the training process, whether it's things related to the company, a supervisor, um, things like that. So that's where you kind of go, want to go with the follow-up questions and making sure you have about two to three follow-up questions per interview. So some additional resources um, through interviewing. Um, again, LinkedIn Learning has a great um, videos on different types of interviewing um, that you can go to to get some more specifics. They also have the practice feature that you can access in the job section. There's lots of great resources and information on our website as well. And if you feel like there's some areas that you want to develop more of your skills, maybe you feel like there's a couple areas that are lacking that in the positions that you're applying for and you want some um, kind of refreshers um, that you can highlight in an interview, but also so you have a better understanding of those skills before starting an internship, um, you can utilize different resources like the Forage, Parker Dewey and LinkedIn Learning as well. There's also some other great um, technical related websites out there as well. So definitely ask some of your fellow peers or professors for additional resources in that area. 
and just make sure that you believe in yourself. You remember that you are students, that all of these are learning experiences, internships, entry-level jobs. You are not expected to know 100% of everything that is on the job description, but they want to see that you are a good fit for the organization, not only your skill set and qualifications, but your personality as well. And remember that you have a lot to offer and you can learn on the job. So just show your eagerness, your positivity, your ability to be independent and take initiative and all those other great qualities that you have. Um, that is what they're looking for. So it's not just um, the skill set and that they have these high expectations. They don't, but they really want to see that there's an eager person that's going to work hard and be willing to learn. So making sure that you're showing them your awesome selves. And if you ever need help, that is what IST Career Solutions is for. We have career appointments um, that you can schedule with your starfish that are 30 minutes that you can answer questions, get some coaching. We do resume reviews. We also provide some great information about employer events, future workshops, um, internship and full-time postings that go on Nittany Lion Careers and more on our weekly Sunday night uh, email from IST Career Solutions. So make sure you're taking a quick scan. We are also the office that organizes and approves IST 495. So once you get an opportunity, if you still need to do the internship requirement, please contact our office. And anything else that is career related, we are here to help. So as we are wrapping up, please send those questions that you might still have lingering um, into the chat or the Q&A. Um, also, too, if you have a moment, if you can scan the QR code and give us some feedback on this presentation um, and also give us an idea of some maybe future topics you would like to see, we would be happy to provide those for you. Our next hot topic is going to be next Tuesday, October 4th from 4.30 to 5 p.m. on career exploration. So if you're still trying to figure out what might be the best um, kind of career option for you, um, related to your major, that's a great workshop for you. Um, and also follow us on our Instagram at IST at Penn State to stay up to date with all things related to the College of IST. So really quickly before we sign off, um, if you are, I think you're sending